Michigan Magazine is kept on the road by our many Michigan friends. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Experience the beauty, artistry, and taste of northern Michigan. Come to Amish Country Natural Products on Mount Tom Road, north of Mile, just off M33. From arts and crafts to fresh foods and vegetables, all natural, all local, all good. Stop by and get acquainted with Amish Country Natural Products, 1454 North Mount Tom Road, Mile. The Cedar Tavern and Grill of Lupton, where friends come to meet friends and families come for delicious food and a wholesome atmosphere. Come relax with your favorite beverage or bring the crew for a great meal and live entertainment. It's happening now at the Cedar of Lupton. Coming up on Michigan Magazine, an old world tradition is perpetuated by artisan and craftsman Glenn Lyons of Northern Michigan. Glenn creates wonderful rugs from rags and his handmade looms. His rugs are in high demand by fans around the state. This rags to riches story is not one of monetary gain, but riches of friendship and loyal customers in search of made in Michigan quality. Then the cowboys of the silver screen are heading to Michigan. Hero lookalikes from throughout the Midwest are saddling up and heading north for a big cowboy weekend that'll bring smiles and nostalgia to those who remember and want to share their past with a new generation remembering those giants of a time gone by when hope sprang eternal and the good guys always persevered we've got the schedule of arrival and appearances coming up on michigan magazine Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. What began as a crazy idea among nine police officers to purchase the historic Clare City Bakery quickly became an international phenomenon. Carrying on a Michigan tradition with delicious donuts, pies, pastries, breads, original coffee, and more. Plus a full menu at the new adjacent Traffic Stop Diner. Downtown Clare, a winning combination. Cops and Donuts. It's back and making memories for a new generation. The Rustic Inn of Lewiston, now open with hot, delicious food, your favorite beverage, and an atmosphere that'll keep you coming back to make new memories and new friends. The new Rustic Inn on Red Oak Road, just south of Lewiston. Hale Hardware, your do-it center in Hale, Michigan. Much more than a regular hardware store, providing everything you need for whatever your project is, along with a knowledgeable sales staff to get her done. Serving Northern Michigan since 1946. Hale Hardware, south of M65 at Ainsley in Hale. Shopping for that special person just got easier when you shop at Rose City Drug at 2640 North M33, just south of the Rose City City Limits. You'll find gifts for everyone on your list from 1 to 100. Shop online or in person at Rose City Drug, Rose City. What you're hearing is the sound of the creation of beauty. The click-clack of a speeding shuttle filling the loom as it weaves the material into unique and beautiful rugs. These are the looms of Glen Lyons, who along with his family weaves custom order rugs the old world way, one at a time with craftsmanship that can only be acquired with years of experience. At his loom shop just five miles north of Standish on Wyatt Road, you'll find Glenn and his family producing hundreds of rugs from all sorts of material. Even as Glenn's granddaughter sleeps next to his weaving mother, lulled asleep by the rhythm of the looms, Glenn tells us of how he first decided to begin a world of weaving. Well, I was to the place where my wife had to help me and out of bed and dress me. I, I couldn't put my own shoes and socks and clothes on, and I had part of a loom give to me. And so I was uh, fooling with that loom, trying to get it to work, to, to have something to sell, mm -hmm. which I sold the loom, and after it was gone, I decided that that was a big mistake. Uh, I should have had something to do, and so I built another loom from scratch. I bought a print for a dollar and built the loom myself, and uh, it, it was made from pine lumber from the lumber yard, and it just couldn't take the beating. And so after 110 rugs wove on that, why, it, uh, it was retired. And that's when I went to Davenport, Iowa, to buy this loom here. My goodness, so you actually built your own looms there in the very beginning. This, and got... this little loom right here, I cut the trees out and back here to build that. I built two of them. My I goodness. said I'd never sell them, but I did sell one last summer, and it went to Idaho Falls, Idaho. Can you tell us a little bit about the different uh, parts of the, of the loom that you've got here? The, these, these parts back here are called the harness. This part here is the beater. The beater. And, and the part that goes across here, that's the shuttle. That was the shuttle. That's the shuttle. Okay. Okay, and you have to leave a big arch in your, in your wart, or it'll draw the sides in narrow, which would, which would spoil your rug. Mm -hmm. 
the it, shuttle is that what makes it semi-automatic or the because because it, it changes the harnesses, harnesses. And, and shoots the shuttle across that's why you'd call it semi-automatic in other words you'd have to be doing that yourself right other, otherwise on on the other looms that i have here you'd have to change the harnesses with your foot and push the shuttle through with your hands ah my goodness this loom here was not designed to be a four harness loom this this loom was designed to be a two harness loom if you notice these two harnesses here are different than these two back here mm -hmm. and and the cams underneath that operate the loom they're made from uh, steel fence posts 3 8 rod and uh, and the pieces underneath the loom down here are supposed to be cast iron and i just took a, a piece of oak two by four and sawed grooves in it and uh, and it serves the purpose it works and does just as good as the as the bought looms mm -hmm. now how long have you been doing this now i started back in 1979. Mm -hmm. that's that was when i first started and and i bought I bought the one loom and then I kept finding looms from time to time and I had 11 of them in my shop at one time. Really? 11 and, looms? And today I have four of these big ones here and I have a, a LeClaire here, I have a Pendleton sitting over there and the other little loom back here it was homemade. I cut the trees behind the house to build it. Oh mm, my goodness. How long does it take you to build a loom? Do you have any idea? Well, mm -hmm. it takes about three four days to, to build it. Uh -huh. The, oh it, well, the, the gears on the loom, my boy had a machine shop in here at one time and, uh, and he cut the gears right here in this building to, to put on that little loom. Mm -hmm. In fact, these looms today are better than the, the day they came out of the factory because we made our own gears and uh, case hardened them so they don't wear. And like the star gear that's in the back of this loom back here, the originals was just a cast iron one that was that you could hold it in your hand and see that they weren't equal. And I had a gunsmith make my first one, and after that, when my boy got a machine shop, uh, he made the rest of them for me. Oh my goodness! Now, Glenn, I see here a, a rug wrapping up around through here. Now, when you do a rug, is this one consistent rug here, and you just? Uh, you know, cut it where you want the rug to end. I mean, I don't see you going through this every time you wanted a rug and restringing this, do you? I mean, no, for separate no. rugs. No, That's I, a lot of work. I, I don't. The, this this has several rugs on it right now, and right here you can see that that this rug is completed up to this point, and so this is where I would be starting another rug right here, and so I put that stick and that piece of music wire in there to make my separation. I see. And then afterwards, I pulled those two out and I put a piece of masking tape. You'll see there's masking tape hanging on every loom, mm -hmm. and you'll find that there's there are scissors hanging on every loom. Every place that I work, there's got to be scissors hanging and and uh, masking tape. Them are two very important things. And so right now I'll show you how that I take the the rugs off of this loom. I'll move my shuttle out of the way here so it doesn't give me any more trouble. Flip this dog back. So and, we're making so so this this is a denim rug. And so now I just cut I cut this rug off right here, right down the middle of that masking tape I told you was my best friend. Uh-huh. And so there's that rug stays on the loom. I'll show you afterwards what what the purpose of that is. So here's another rug that's that's coming off. I cut again across here. So this keeps those loose ends in line, doesn't that it? That keeps everything in place until I'm ready to hem them on the sewing machine. I see. Oh, you've been a busy person here. How many rugs do you have here? Looks like you got quite a few. And you could keep on going uh, depending on how many rugs you want. Well, you, after you get about so many on there, it's necessary to take them off because it keeps your tension tight. Now, see the rugs that I just took off were rag rugs. This is this rug here is yarn, and that's a beautiful rug. Mm-hmm. So as far as rag rugs, you would feed uh, actual pieces of rag through these instead of the instead of the yarn. That's right. Okay. All right. Now, Glenn, you've been doing this for so many years, but who in the world taught you the art? Is it self-taught, or how did you uh, find out what you're doing right and what you were doing wrong? Well, I, I never seen another weaver work, 
until I started playing with the loom myself, and so I guess you'd have to say that I'm, I'm self-taught. Trial and error, more or less, eh? Yes, and, and there was times that I would, I would come out here and spend a half a night when I'd get a new idea, trying to figure out something to make it work. And, uh, and, and so I've, I've, had, I've had some real, real experiences. There, <laughs> there were times that I made a mistake when I was threading a loom and you'd have to tear out half of the material mm. across the loom. How many hours would you say is into a rug like this? Uh, There's a lot of uh, from, setup from, work and... From the time, from the time that you start uh, taking the overhauls apart and cutting them into strips and, and, and preparing your material and weaving it and and hemming it up afterwards, I'd say there's probably about six hours in that rug. Ooh, my goodness. And what are we doing now? So now I'm putting, I'm putting this rug back here. So now every, every string, everything is, is tightened up and, and even and ready to go so I didn't lose any time. Time and patience is what goes into each of Glenn's creations, along with a lot of concentration. For instance, in this pattern, Glenn tells us there are 11 different foot pedal positions to keep track of. When working on a delicate pattern like this, you have got to remain focused. But as you can see, the results are beautiful. Another time-consuming portion of rug weaving is having to restring an entire loom for another pattern. Everything has to be done precisely in a job that will take over six hours to complete. A true labor of love for Glenn and his family. Are you going to be passing this on, this art on to your family and uh, and keep this uh, tradition going in your family? Or? Well, I, I think my daughter-in-law will probably one day end up with all these looms. Mm -hmm. uh, my little grandson, when he was three and a half years old, he wove a strip of material that was almost perfect, six foot long. He worked three days at it to do it. My. And, and so uh, even a, a child enjoys doing this type of thing. In fact, both of my grandsons, even yet today, every now and then they come over and they say, Grandpa, I want to weave. And, and so they just make a little mess on the loom, but that's all right. I don't mind. You don't mind. <laughs> uh, producing something like this of quality and beauty is something that uh, anybody can be proud of. But you do enjoy it, though. I enjoy so. every moment of it. Well, Glenn, we see a lot of uh, labor of love here, a lot of quality products, handmade. Ah, Weaver's Delight right here in this little room. We'll be looking for more of these beautiful rugs throughout Northern Michigan. All right, thank you. Thank you. Michigan Magazine is being brought to you in part by Hingeman Acres Canoe Livery and Resort on M33 just north of Mayo, catering to the outdoor enthusiasts. Cabins, canoes, kayaks, rafts, and more. Daytime or overnight trips along the world-famous Asabo River. A family getaway for over 75 years. Clemex Sales and Service on Mapes Road, west of Mile, your complete recreational vehicle sales and service connection. Visit their beautiful showroom of new and pre-owned ATVs, lawnmowers, power equipment, snowmobiles, utility vehicles, and more. Clemex Sales and Service is also the home of the American-made Victory Motorcycle Line on display at Clemex on Mapes Road, Mile. The Michigan-made rebounding mailbox pole. Never again worry about the winter snowplow taking out your mailbox with this ingenious rebounding pole. Your mailbox takes a hit and keeps coming back year after year. Call now or visit their website, toughmailboxes.com. All right, we're at the Cedar Valley Wild Frontier Park with uh, Cliff Parents. One of the organizers, the founder of Cowboy Days, we're going into the 16th year, and we are here because this is one of the places the Cowboys will be making their return visit to celebrate the Cowboys and the Silver Screen, the Old West. Tell us, Cliff, what's going to be happening this year at the 16th Annual? We're going to start in Lumpton on the 1st at Parkview Acres in the morning, and uh, then in the afternoon we'll be at the Cedar Tavern in Lupton. And then on Saturday and Sunday we'll be at Coopersville, Old West Town. Then on the 4th of July we'll be here all day from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And, and we have got a lot of cowboys yeah. from all over. we got a lot more than you had last year, right? Yeah, we got a lot more. I'll give a little rundown. we got Gus Limbo, the Cherokee Indian. Uh -huh. Rachel Schaefer, she plays Annie Oakley. Gary McCoon, he plays Roy Rogers. Cindy Smith, she's an entertainer. Kevin Coffin, she's Belle Starr. Steve Austin, the gambler, John Pips, Tonno, Don Cagle, Lone Ranger, Bob Wallace, Lash LaRue, 
Matt Dillon is played by Gary Cagle. Bob Cedar plays John Wayne. Ken Cagle plays Rooster Cogburn. Jared Austin plays Lash LaRue. We also have three or four more that will be appearing. We're just getting them signed up now. Mm -hmm. and we're going to have uh, shootouts. We're going to have whiplashing. We're going to have all types of entertainment. He throws the hatchets the, and the knives. He's going to give a demonstration on that. Uh, that's Tano that does that. We're going to have 50-50 drawings and we're Great. giving two uh, Henry rifles away. Oh boy. Uh, $5 each or 6 for 20 uh, And we're going to have some door prizes that will be given away. At Cedar Bar they're going to have their old West Western hamburger on special that day when we're out there. Oh boy. And we just got lots of stuff going on. It's four days in three cities and we got a bunch of great sponsors at the bottom of the poster. They're on the placemat. Uh-huh. And we got, got to thank Backwoods Mustard for sponsoring the poster. We have the four guys up here. But they are the four vigilantes. Yeah, the four be, vigilantes. They are going to be putting yeah. on a great show. And, and it's, it's wonderful. We're doing some new locations, too. For instance, this is a brand new fun park. It just happens to coincide with a wild frontier, which this is all about. I mean, this is something that you brainchild way back when, uh, 16 years ago, right, right. Cliff? And it's, the first uh, year we had three people, the three Kegel brothers. <laughs> Okay. It <laughs> just kept growing every year. So. Yeah, yeah, and it's all in celebration of the old-time westerns that you see on TV and the heroes of the, the silver screen back in the good old days. But it's come a long ways, and it's amazing that uh, the kids can now meet them. They'll be signing autographs, too, won't yep. they? free autographs. Uh, we're going to have a comic book, oh, our yeah. second annual comic book, and in the center section is all the pictures of all the cowboys, and they could have them sign that. That's a collector. That's a collector. We're only getting a few few this year. Uh, uh -huh. We won't have overabundance. It'll be ten dollars a piece. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're gonna at that uh, Coopersville. We're gonna have the money sawdust pile for the kids. Oh yeah, that was a, that was a we got a horse drawn wagons there that you get free rides. Mm -hmm. Saturday night we're gonna have fireworks in Coopersville. Oh, boy. That's and we just got a lot more things that we keep adding all the time. So and of course we'll have it up online at thespiritmichigan.com. But I like uh, the idea, too, that you bring in uh, Gus in, the Native American, who was there last year. He was quite the hit doing the Native American dance. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, come on out to all these places and locations. And Coopersville is really growing, as we heard Spike tell us all about the uh, renovations. He's really coming along into bringing back the Old West for the kids and the kid at heart. Yeah. So. And another added feature we have is Chris Johnson. He's coming from downstate, and he does... Uh, with his cracks the whip and he has a 12 foot whip that he takes a, a cup and sets a cup of water on top of the cup and he takes the cup underneath without <laughs> spilling the water and he's got a whole bunch of tricks he's going to be doing oh, that's, gonna be that's a new added feature we just signed him up yesterday yeah and all these things are free to come on yeah. out and enjoy wherever they happen to be at so yeah. and uh, it's, it's going to be fun so we wish everybody to, to come on out and uh, we hope that it's going to be a part of your life for many, many years to come on out every year and uh, enjoy the cowboy days. Well, it's going to be great. Hey, yeah. You got your cowboy outfit already? Come on out dressed yep. as a cowboy. Yep. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Cliff. Okay. Rose Valley Winery on Beachwood Road in Rose City. See what thousands are raving about, creating a delicious variety of award-winning Michigan wines. Stop by and taste for yourself. The taste of Michigan is yours at Rose Valley Winery. Vacation. Don't make the planning of it more than what you're trying to get away from. At NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com, you can choose from over 2,500 cabins, cottages, lodges, resorts, lakefront vacation home rentals, and more. Whatever experience you're looking for, from rustic to luxury and everything in between. No more rustling with telephone books. No more endless internet searches. Just one site with over 2,500 Northern Michigan destinations. NorthernMichiganCabinRentals.com Thanks for joining us along Michigan's back roads. Are you ready for the summer? Well, it's definitely here. As a matter of fact, that's today's phrase of the week. Welcome summer 2016. Send it along to us via email or U.S. mail at the addresses listed here. Please be sure and include your name and postal address so we can send you something Michigan if your name's drawn. If you're a winner, you'll be notified both by email and U.S. mail. Have a great week. 
get up, get out, and enjoy another wonderful summer. We'll see you next week for another edition of Michigan Magazine. We'd like to thank all those that help keep Michigan Magazine on the road. Cops and Donuts Bakery, downtown Clare. A winning combination. Cops and Donuts. Something special is cooking hot and delicious. Indulge yourself at Morning at Maggie's in Bay City. Omelets, frittatas, hotcakes, and more. Make every day special with a stop at Morning at Maggie's for breakfast or lunch on Saginaw and Bay City. Introducing the Weed Gator. For safe and easy aquatic weed removal, the Weed Gator is the number one alternative to harsh chemicals for getting rid of pond and lake weeds. Safe and effective. See it in action now at WeedGator.net. Made in the USA. Announcing the Michigan Paddle Sports Directory, or one-stop internet connection at michiganpaddlesports.com. It's now possible to explore Michigan's extensive waterways like never before. Michigan Paddle Sports Directory is a comprehensive directory of canoe and kayak rentals and liveries throughout the entire state of Michigan. At michiganpaddlesports.com, you'll find a great paddling route, outfitter, store, school, rental shop, or tour guide. Michigan's great waterways are waiting for you. Make it an adventure worth remembering by first visiting michiganpaddlesports.com.